Welcome to the PCAM Podcast. Hi, this is another in the series of the PCAM Podcasts. My name is Tony Satchel. I run Candle Music uh, and I'm a committee member of PCAM and also a founding member of PCAM. Today's podcast is being recorded at Candle Music and engineered by Alistair, who has the joy of listening to all this. Uh, probably the most boring of the lot, but hopefully fairly quick. Um, and it's to do with the pink form or the PCAM contract, which had been uh, negotiated with the IPA, which is the Institute of Practitioners of Advertising, uh, which all major agencies belong to. So it's an agreed contract between us and them. Um, and it should be used really on any master job you do because it gives you security and explains what you're actually licensing to somebody. So the pink form is available from the PCAM website for any members. Uh, you go to the agreements page and you'll see you've got the original music contract in Word and also in PDF and the arranged music contract in Word and, and also in PDF, which is what we're dealing with. Uh, the Word one you can download and it fills in the boxes. The PDF you can download and fill it in by hand or whichever way you want to do it. So... We're going to start with the agreement of production and licensing of original music. This is obviously stuff you've been commissioned to write yourself, as opposed to re-recording somebody else's tune, which we'll get on to later. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very quickly go through all the boxes and explain what should be filled in there. And um, if at the end of that you have any queries or you don't understand anything, you can always ring the PCAM helpline, which is 0906. 633-0070. That's also on the PCAM website. So let's start right from the beginning on the agreement for production and licensing original music composition. So obviously in the right hand, top right hand corner, you start with a contract number. Obviously you need to put something in there, whatever you wish to put. Then it's between. So you need to put your name and address. So your name and your address there is the producer. And then it goes down to name and address of the agency. So obviously you put that in there. The name of the work is the next box. You can call things whatever you so wish, but it's quite useful and good to keep the script title in the name of your composition because it helps it link. So we're inclined to always say, if, for example, you're doing a, a job for Coca-Cola and the script title is brilliant, we would use that as the title of our composition. So we call our composition... Coca-Cola, brilliant. So then we go on to job details. If we're using that as an example, we've got client Coca-Cola, product Coca-Cola, name of commercial, brilliant, number of commercials. Uh, quite often when you do a commercial for people, they want cut downs. So quite often you will do a, a 30 second and they want 15 cut downs or you do a 60 second and they want a 40 cut down. So whatever it is, anyway, you put the number of commercials in there. Um, and then you put the lengths next door to it. Then you've got the identity clock number. Well, this is um, a number that is on every script which is passed for broadcast. If it's a TV script, it's Clearcast who, who do the um, clearing of it. And it will have a number which has to be stamped on the script. You can always find out about Clearcast at clearcast.co.uk. If it's a radio script, it's done by the RACC and they're racc.co.uk. So the script will have to have a number of, of either the radio or TV on it. Uh, that you should obviously get from the advertising agency. Then we go down to consideration. Well, this is just the money, so it's, I think, fairly obvious. So the demo is obviously put the demo fee in, original music composition fee. This is whatever you charge. I mean, the current rate is from between 500 and 3500 uh, for people's composition fees. The average is probably sort of two and a half thousand to three at the moment. Musicians and directions, that is, even if it's just you, you should obviously charge your time out, so you need to put something in there. Artist fees, if you have a singer involved, they, their fee would go in there. Studio costs, whatever the cost of your studio, even if it's your bedroom, you should be charging something per hour. Usage charges, this is then dependent on where the commercial is going to be broadcast. Quite often the first media is included in the, in the composition fee, but people do charge 
per media. So you can go onto the PCAM website and see in fees and usages, you will uh, be able to see the various charges there, which are, for example, you might charge, in, uh, on top of your composition, you might charge 100% for TV, 250% for internet, 25% for install usage, 25% for telephone on hold, and so on. So those sort of details would go there. And after all these um, bits, there is a place to put comments on so you can make things clear. And the clearer you make things, the better. Next markup. Uh, traditionally, people charge 25% of all their production costs. And this was to cover all the sort of things like your time when you're trying to book artists, your waiting time to get paid, your paperwork, and for all the general office stuff that you might do to make the production work. Um, some people charge it, some people don't. If you don't want to charge it, you don't have to. Next is the artist section. Um, so you have number of musicians, which is, if it's just you, one, or if it's five musicians, it's five, number of singers, and number of voiceovers. So you fill those in, and you put the basic session fees in as well. Um, nowadays, singers are coming in between 200 and 220 a session, uh, and musicians, some are really between 150 to 200 a session. Whatever you agree with people, agree with it before you do the session, so there's no argument about it afterwards. And then you fill all that in there and you fill in who the use is to be paid by. Well, if it's musicians and it's you, well, obviously you're paying that. If it's the um, singers, you'll probably be paying that. Sometimes agencies ask for a particular singer which they want to book themselves or whatever, which is fair enough. So whoever is meant to be paying for that, and particularly when you get to voiceovers, uh, quite often the agency will pay the voiceovers fee. So although you're recording it on your session they will actually be paying the fee. So you, you just fill those bits in, whoever's meant to be paying the fee and that bit. The next section is composers, which obviously is yourself. And then you put your original composition fee, which we've talked about before in there, whatever that is, the date of the recording and the date of the first transmission. Now, if you don't know that, either leave it blank or the normal thing to do really, if you can't find out when the date of first transmission is, is when you send the agency the contract, is you ask them to fill that in for you before they sign the contract. Term of use. Well, this is the term of the license. The standard license really is one year, but it can be whatever you have agreed. And in that you would put whatever that is. So you put one year from the date of first transmission, which is why it's important to get the agency to actually fill that in. Use expiry date would obviously, if it's a year's contract, would be a year from the date of the first transmission. So that's fairly obvious. Next section is license media. Um, and you put a cross in any of those boxes. So if it's restricted UK television, like it's just on a local channel, you'd cross that. If it's internet, you'd also add that in and any other media, whatever it is. So you'd cross the relevant media. So everyone knows exactly what this commercial is being licensed for and where it can be broadcast. And if anyone goes outside those terms, they're then breaking the contract. In the detailed description of use and territories under that, you're really just reiterating everything that's been before it so you would say one times 30 seconds plus one time 15 second cut down uk tv internet client website facebook youtube and you could put exactly what the media is all down there so that would be a complete description of what you've agreed to do when you get to consignment note details is the next next section again composer which would be you the music production house which is presumably you and then the publisher copyright owner so if you're publishing it yourself you go in there if not if you've got a publisher you obviously put their name in there and again the duration of the music then you would sign it where it says producer and date it and you do two copies of this or probably three if you're sensible and you would send two copies to the agency and ask them to sign it date it and send it back to you now again you can do this you know as, as a pdf or you can send it as a hard copy it doesn't really matter but it is important to send that contract off and have an email or something saying that's what you're doing it's worth keeping a copy yourself because they might not ever send it back which happens many times but at least you then have the proof that you sent them the contract and uh, this is the terms that you're working under but it's good to bully them to sign it and get it back because then there can never be any arguments about anything to do with it 
On the back of the contract, there's a special stipulation box. This is really for anything which you agree outside the existing conditions which are on the back of the contract. For example, if the agency wanted you to run your truck past a musicologist and you didn't feel this was particularly justified, you could agree with them that they would pay for this musicologist um, and this could be put in the special stipulations. It's also for anything else that you feel might have been left out or not covered by any of the agreement you've got. It's important that you get the agency to initial anything put in the special stipulations box uh, and you should also initiate it yourself. It just means that this is proof of the agreement you have with the agency and you're legally covering yourself. So that's the, um, the agreement for the production and licensing of original music composition. The other contract is the agreement for the licensing and re-recording of an existing copyright work. It's basically filled in exactly the same way. Um, this, is, this contract is for when you're re-recording somebody else's work. So you've been asked to re-record a hit track or a, an existing track and again it, it's all exactly the same so i don't need to go into the detail filling in of each box because it's all absolutely the same except when you get to consideration instead of composer's um, name it's the arranger's name and obviously you'll be the arranger so you put your arrangement name in there and your arrangement fee again people are charging the same for arrangements as they are for original compositions because frankly they're just as difficult if not more so and people's arrangement fees, again, go for anything from £500 to £3,500. So whatever your fee is, when it comes to the licensing arrangement, uh, you've just got a few different things here. You've got the ranger's name, which would be you, the arrangement fee, which we've talked about, the license to be negotiated by. Now, this is important because the license to be negotiated by means who is going to clear this copyright. Normally, it's the agency. I mean, if it's you, that's fine. Uh, we, for example, do a lot of clearing, so I would be putting our name in there. But when it comes to license to be paid for, I'd be putting the agency's name in. Because although we clear it, we don't pay for the license. Uh, and we don't do that for a very simple reason, that if the agency do something which is uh, against the terms of the license, we would get into trouble. So it's much easier that if they pay it direct, so they have the license direct, even if we've done the negotiation for the clearing of the track to be used. So in those bits, so you'd have the license to be negotiated by probably the agency in most cases and to be paid for by the agency. Changes to words and music. Well, if, if you're doing a parody, you obviously you need to put yes. And then if the change has been approved, you just have to put who they've been approved by. So if you're doing a parody and the agency will tell you they've cleared the copyright, you want to check that they've cleared the copyright for a parody. Um, and then you would, be, you would be able to put changes to words and music yes. Changes approved by the agency stroke publisher. In the licensed media, is all the same there, the same detailed description of use of territories, which is important. And then in the consignment note details, you'd have your name for the arranger and your name for the music production house, but you'd have the name of the original composers, which the agency obviously should tell you, or if you don't know already, if you can find out, and also the publisher copyright owner. So that's the person who publishes the track who the agency have licensed it from. So that's important that goes in there. And again, sign sign them and send it to the agency and get agency to send you a copy signed back. Uh, again, on the back of that is a special stipulation box, should you need to change it or alter anything. If you put anything in that, make sure you initial it and make sure the agency do too. I think that probably covers everything. It's a pretty, pretty straightforward process. If there's anything you don't understand, uh, you can go to the PKM helpline, which is 0906-633-0070, or the website www.pkm.co.uk, and you'll find all you need to know on that and other contact numbers if you should need them. Uh, I hope this has been some use to you. It's a rather dry and boring subject, but unfortunately very important, uh, as all admin is in this business. So I hope it has been of some use, and... I hope you carry on listening to the series of PCAM podcasts. So it's goodbye from me, and if Alistair's still awake out there, it's goodbye from him. PCAM podcast.